Mini War Gaming's Beat Map Bat Rap. And we're back to Kador turn three. So I have my ongoing corrosion, which does continue. It leaves on a one or two. And so I take one damage to a random location. And so that's not too big a deal. You could have end up killing him in the end. So I'm going to give a focus to my Colossal. And then also a focus and two to the Spriggan. So two spokens to the Spriggan. Then the Spriggan's going to charge into the Bane Thralls because he can. And because he can do lots of damage. And because the officer is actually within his charge range. And so he's going to move in. And yes, he's moving that model because he has Bulldoze. So he can move a model up to two inches when he goes into base contact. So he's just going to move him a bit. And um, he kills the Bane Thrall. The, the officer. So that means that they're no longer going to be able to stand up automatically when they get knocked down from tough. So he hits the next one with the shield and it makes it tough and then he's going to buy an extra attack to hit it again which will automatically hit him and automatically wound him. So he had to make his tough again and he failed it. The demolition core guys are then going to charge in to kill these two Bane Thralls. They shouldn't have any problems because they have backswing which allows them to attack twice. Uh, or they can do Icebreaker, which allows them to um, attack once boosted, but they don't really need to boost against these guys. So they just, they just need to hit, and the guy failed his um, his tough. So the next one attacks and hits. Needed fives to hit, and this one makes his tough, but then he's going to get hit three more times automatically. So we just roll all three tough rolls, and he fails two of them. And then the Grey Lord Turnian are moving up. This one wants to get into that little gap so he can hit these two Bane Thralls. What I'm going to try to do is dominate my objective to get a point. And so he fires and he hits the first one and uh, manages to wound it. And he makes his tough though, so he's still there. He's knocked down, and even though you're knocked down, he can still contest an objective. It's only if you're running away. And then he hits the second one who fails his tough roll and he dies. So, And then we add a cloud effect that we do Blizzard on top of the Demolition Core and on top of Karchev. Then the other Grey Lord turning are moving up. You got to finish off that last one. I could use one of my other guys to do it, but I really want to use my Colossal for something else. So I fire at the last one. I do hit it, and he does fail his tough roll. So that gets rid of pretty much everything within four inches of the flag. And then I drop down some Blizzards on top of my Demolition Core to give them the extra defense. The Colossal then moves up, and he wants to knock that Death Jack back. So he's going to buy. He's going to boost the attack. Need an Elevens again, and he fails it again. Very disappointing. I'd love to see things get blown back by that. So it scatters back, and at least it hits a few guys. The Death Jack takes dice minus 11. Nothing happens there. The Bile Thrall takes dice minus 5 and dies. And then his Warwitch Siren actually gets killed by the blast damage. It was dice minus 5, and he had 5 points, and I got rolled a 10. So that was a nice little victory, at least. And then he takes his um, secondary shots at the Bile Thrall there, just trying to do whatever damage he can, and he does manage to kill it without any problem. And then with his other secondary weapon, he's going to lay down the barrage again so that anything that enters those AoEs will take a POW 6. That's just a nice way to deter him a little bit. Karchev is just then going to give himself a focus, and he moves up into base contact. And uh, there's all the arms and things get in the way, but he was able to get in there. And then he uses his range attack, which will knock down, and he misses. So that really sucks. And then uh, he's just going to camp his other three focus because he now realizes a little mistake he made. He thought that with the Colossal moving there that there wouldn't be enough space for the Death Jack to get in. But there is enough space. So I need to um, try to do some damage. So we've got the shots from the, um, from the Shock Troopers' shields and only managed to do a couple damage to that Death Jack. So I'm in trouble here because now he can get to uh, Karchev with both his Kraken and the Death Jack. So the Death Jack now has five focus and the Kraken has three. And on top of that, he's going to move up his Scarlock Thrall and um, put Crippling Grasp onto Karchev. He needs a seven to hit, thankfully misses that. So Karchev will be at full strength. His defense is uh, only 12 in close combat. The Kraken has a melee range of four uh, during his activation, four inches. So he moves up, does not charge and attacks, and he misses with his first attack. So he has a second initial, which hits, and then it's dice, and he's gonna boost the damage, it's dice minus four, and he rolls not too bad, and does a good amount of damage to Karchev right there. Looks like about nine. Then he buys another attack, needs sixes to hit, and misses. So the Kraken actually doesn't really do anything. Oh, we got one more attack. Maybe this will do something. He hits with that one, and it's dice minus four, and he actually gets a nice solid hit there, does seven points of damage to his six. So the Kraken does manage to hit him pretty hard, but doesn't kill him, which is surprising. But the Death Jack then charges in, and he is able to fit in there. It's just all these arms are in the way. We, we checked beforehand. But he does get there, so we move the flag. Because this is really going to be it. Can he kill him with that? He is then, so he charged in, that uses a focus. He needed a four to hit. 
and his dice minus four, he only does two points of damage, so whiffs the damage roll there. Then he attacks at the second initial, and he hits, and then does a healthy no amount of damage, does seven points of damage, so Karchev is not looking too good here. He does his third initial, his tusks, and he hits, and it does dice minus seven, and he does three more damage, so you can see Karchev is not doing very well. He buys an extra attack with his main gun, or main weapon, he hits, dice minus four, no damage. Buys another attack, so he still has two more focus after this. He hits, dice minus four, no damage. Buys another attack. He hits, dice minus four, no damage. So he now needs to roll 10 on his damage in order to kill Karchev. So he hits and he needs to roll a 10. And he gets it, just barely. Now that should have been an easy kill, but that was a hard kill. And so that is a victory for the Cricks. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that. That was ridiculously close. Oh, like it didn't seem like it was going to be close. No, but then it was close, and it Yellow came down. Yellow fisted death, Jack, and then he turned into just enough. Yeah, he was close. Yeah, intense. Yeah, Crix, definitely awesome. I'm actually thinking. I, I was telling you this earlier. Uh, I'm actually thinking of trying out the Crix. Yeah, I'm playing the Kato for a little while now. I want a bit of a change, and the Crix kind of have more my style, where it's not just straightforward. Kato are pretty straightforward. You kind of you, you develop your simple tactics. There's there's some things that you can you can kind of work out, but that's more like general war machine tactics. Yeah, and you'll get more into the debuffs, which is really fun. Yeah. Really, I think debuffs really can um, take your uh, they increase the chance of your opponent making a mistake because when you're buffing yourself, you kind of know what you're doing, mm -hmm. but you don't expect to get debuffed, and when it comes from a weird angle, it can really throw your opponent off. Yeah, so maybe I'll be trying out Cricks in the future. For sure. So we'll see. Well, thank you for the game. Thank you very much, Matt. It was, it was awesome. Exciting. Look forward to seeing you in more battle reports. For sure. Vault members, stay tuned for the post-game show. If you're not a vault member, assuming this video is out for free, not in the vault, then make sure you join. You can join at miniwargaming.com slash free DVDs by getting a free DVD and a seven-day free trial. So you can uh, watch the post-game show and tons of other stuff. This is Matthew from Mini Wargaming. Happy Wargaming.